I have redrawn and slightly modified the Class AB amplifier with the operational amplifier uh, driving it that I have used in the first couple of parts of the uh, Class AB amplifier uh, review. You'll recognize I still have the 741 op amp. I've arranged it, however, so that I can either make the feedback local, that is, from the output of the operational amp back to its inverting input, or global, that is, from the output of the overall circuit back to the inverting input. Now, recall that the Class AB output stage is a non-inverting stage, so the phase of this signal will be essentially the same as the phase of this signal. There will be some slight phase difference because of the uh, circuit on the output. I have also added a noise source that I can turn on and off into this point. That uh, I'll show you later the reason for that. And then, uh, still further, I have also constructed a little 5-volt uh, supply with hum that you see down here. Just a simple diode rectifier with a capacitor and a little bit of a load resistor. And we'll see how we use that in a little bit, too. So right now, I have the circuit connected with local feedback and I am applying a 1 kilohertz signal to the input. So let's go over and look at the analog discovery and uh, become familiar with uh, what the output looks like. Here is the input and output of the amplifier. The input is in yellow and that is at uh, 100 millivolts per division. So about 400 millivolts of input, and the output is at uh, 500 millivolts per division, so about three and a half uh, volts of output. And as I said, that is with local feedback. Now what I'm going to do is move the feedback from the output of the amplifier, I mean the output of the op amp, to the output of the amplifier. And there you see the gain goes up a little bit. But basically the output waveform remains roughly the same. Now what I'm going to do is inject a little bit of noise into the circuit. Let me show you what we're doing there. You'll notice that I have put a resistor into the the, the essentially the output of the op amp or the point at which the op amp connects to the AB output stage. It's about a 4.7K and I brought that out and capacitively coupled it to the uh, waveform generator 2 of the analog discovery. So what we're going to be doing is turning on a higher frequency signal to simulate the effect of noise in this amplifier and we'll do that with local feedback turned on and then we will hook up global feedback and see if there's any essential difference between using global feedback to try to counter in part an internally generated noise signal. Here is the analog discovery back to local feedback and now I'm going to turn on the noise signal. And there you may notice that the signal becomes uh, a little bit more distorted. You can perhaps see it even more with the peaks here. Let me turn the, the noise on and off. This is a uh, 10 kilohertz signal. Notice that on, off, on, off. Now it's a little hard to determine just how 
uh, what's going on there. So what I'm going to do is show you the spectrum analyzer and it's a little easier to see there the effect of this noise input. This is the spectrum without the noise and I've turned on the noise. It, it's averaging 20 so you see that we get a pretty good spike at the 10 kilohertz setting. It's at about minus 40 dB. Now we're going to apply global feedback and what you see now is with global feedback uh, what, what you saw in a little bit ago was the open loop response and of course when it's open loop it's uh, saturated so but notice that now instead of about minus 40 dB we're getting about minus 48 dB of that 10 kilohertz what that is showing us is that internal noise in the amplifier is suppressed in part by the global feedback and we'll talk a little more about why that happens uh, in a little bit. Now let's try a second experiment with global and local feedback involving hum on the power supply. As I indicated earlier, I've constructed a deliberately bad plus 5 volt supply that has a fair amount of hum on it. What we're going to do is substitute this supply with hum for the, the more stable uh, lab supply that I've been using for the plus 5 volts. We are back to the scope of the analog discovery. Once again, the yellow trace is the input, the blue trace is the output. And notice that what we have is a fair amount of hum on the output due to the supply having uh, a lot of, uh, in this case, 60 hertz hum that's coming through to the output. Now this is with local feedback. Now let me apply global feedback and you notice that it has essentially corrected the hum. And once again, we'll talk about this uh, a little, in a little bit. In fact, we'll even look at some, uh, some signals internal that will help explain this a little better. Now what I've done is shorted out one of the diodes that biases the output stage. So what I have introduced is crossover distortion in the positive output stage. The negative output stage is still operating class AB, but because I've shorted that diode, you see that instead of it following the input signal, there is significant crossover distortion. Now, let's look at what happens when we apply global feedback to the crossover distortion. You may notice that it has eliminated a significant amount of the crossover distortion. We'll go back to local feedback and you see we have quite a bit more crossover distortion. Now let's look at the actual signals inside this amplifier as we apply feedback. What we are going to be doing is we're going to be moving the scope channel 1 which has been showing the input with channel 2 showing the output. And instead of showing the input, we're going to be showing the output of the op amp in both local and global feedback situations. I have left this diode shorted so that we're still getting significant crossover distortion. Recall that the blue trace is the output and you see we're having, we have significant crossover distortion. The output of the op amp though looks perfectly normal. Of course, that's because it has local feedback, so it is accurately reproducing the input, but it's not being influenced by the output stage, by any feedback from the output stage. Now let's apply global feedback. You may notice what has happened to the two signals. The input signal 
has now been distorted by the feedback that is the output of the op amp. And that's because we're now applying the output signal through the inverting input, through the feedback network. The op amp is comparing the output to the undistorted input and is providing a correction voltage. That's what you see here, is the correction voltage. Here we are back with local feedback, op amp accurately re representing the input but providing no correction for the crossover distortion. Negative feedback, global negative feedback, providing some correction. Now let's try the same thing but with the hum experiment uh, or the hum input that we looked at earlier. Now that we're supplying a hum voltage, you notice that both the output in blue and the op amp output in yellow are affected by the hum. Now let's apply global feedback. Notice that the output of the op amp continues to oscillate as it did before with the 60 Hz hum, but look how stable the output has become. So let's take a look on the uh, circuit and see if we can sort of figure out what's going on here. Remember that when we apply global feedback, we're feeding the actual output back to the inverting input. We're doing that so that this op amp can compare the feedback signal to the input signal. It produces an error that is a correction voltage at its output that tries to make the feedback signal an exact copy of the input signal with, of course, the adjustments for the gain. And that's why the ratio of these two resistors is important because this forms a voltage divider that takes the output signal or the feedback signal and divides it by the ratio of these resistors and you then apply that to the op amp. That determines the overall gain of this amplifier. That is the ratio of these two resistors. But by feeding back to the negative input, this op amp is a comparator. It's comparing this signal to this signal and is trying to make the feedback signal an exact copy of the input signal. It does that by applying a correction voltage that is whatever it takes to drive this feedback signal to be exactly uh, the same as the input signal. That correction is then fed over to this stage. So, what we have learned is that signals that are introduced within the feedback loop. Now, understand, if you have noise or hum on your input signal itself, feedback will not fix that because that's outside the feedback loop. But if you have a good clean signal here and you get noise, as we simulated with this, or hum, as we simulated with the bad power supply, or distortion, as we simulated by shorting out one of these diodes. All of that is at least partially corrected by global feedback that causes the op amp to produce a correction voltage. Wherever the source of the distortion is, the op amp is trying to eliminate it. So I hope this has been useful in understanding why that in good quality amplifiers, designers use both local and global feedback. It's not an answer to poor design. You still want to design the best possible amplifier you can get. So obviously, if you have a shorted diode in the output, you want to fix that. But, to an extent, global feedback can correct for a multitude of errors, including nonlinearities in the transistors themselves, noise that gets into the system, perhaps through our radiation, 
or conduction, hum that is present on one or both of the power supplies. I didn't show you hum on the negative 5 volt supply, but this global feedback loop will attempt to correct for that as well. Feedback is a very complicated topic, and to actually study it in some detail is more than I think that I want to get into. But there is an excellent series that an MIT professor did that is available on YouTube on feedback control systems that goes into much, much more detail. It's a little bit mathematical. You do have to understand a little bit of calculus and uh, it's really aimed at a, a senior level double E student. But it's an excellent course. Look for it uh, as an MIT course on feedback control systems. But I hope you have at least learned from this, if you didn't already understand, why it is that local feedback is useful for setting the gain of an op amp, but global feedback is much more useful at eliminating sources of distortion within the feedback loop. As I said before, I hope you enjoy these videos. Hope you'll stay tuned for some more. But in the meantime, have a nice day.